We are at the Kaimoga Grist Mill just outside of Childersburg, Alabama, and we are joined by Stevie White. Now he has some a few automobiles of his own, but he's with this group that has just I mean it's just it's really speechless just how old these vehicles are and how many vehicles they got. But the first question is what is the name of the society that you're with today? It's the Horses Carriage Club of America. It's a national club. And what is the newest car that is allowed to be in the club? Well, if you're a purist, it is all Bryce cars, meaning Bryce cars that had Bryce radiator, Bryce headlights, Bryce side lights on them. And those were primarily cars 1915 and older. Now, what we have done in this region here, which is the North Carolina region, to allow all the Model Ts into our, our club functions, the Model T was made from 1909 to 1927. We allow cars up, to, up through 1927 into our functions. Now these vehicles, they are gas engines. Like what type of components in these type of vehicles? Well, we don't have any steam cars in this uh, group here, but now steam vehicles would be acceptable because they fit the age criteria. But these are all just uh, gasoline engines, internal combustion engines, four cycle engines and they They're very low horsepower, but uh, they got the job done back then. Okay, but it's, it beats a horse in a buggy. It did. If you think about having to feed a horse and a buggy all the time, you don't have to feed these except when they're running. It's a lot easier, even though they are quirky to crank up, it was a lot simpler than getting a horse out of a stall and putting a harness on it and backing it up to a uh, buggy and, and getting all that done to go to town. So it was simpler than that. So what sites have you been to so far and what sites do you have upcoming still to visit? Well, we this goes on all week. Now, Monday was sort of a shakedown day. We started at about one o'clock in Sylacaque. We went for uh, wel welcomed by the mayor to Bluebell Park. We went through Bluebell, got ice cream, and then we went to the Marble Quarry Overlook, and then down to Purcell Farms, driving through Fayetteville. Just about a 30-mile route, just to get all the bugs worked out of your car, which uh, uh, you don't always get done. So that was Monday. Then uh, Tuesday, let's see, where did we go Tuesday? Uh, I'm having a senior moment here. <laughs> it's been a, it, it has been a long day today. So anyway, let, let's go over to today, what we've done today, and then we'll okay. back up. Today, we started out this morning in Sylacaque. We went uh, out 148. We headed to the back way, through to Talladega, to the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, speedway up there. Then we toured the museum up there. Uh, we had a catered meal there. And now then, here we are back here at the, uh, at the Kyle Mill. We're going to spend this afternoon here and then take the back road through Odina on back to Sylacauga. So that's, that's today. Now tomorrow is our longest day, and it's going to be a toughie. We're leaving out 30 minutes earlier in the morning. we got to go up 280. we got to take uh, a lift on the other side of the, uh, of the Coos River Bridge. We're going around to the Montevallo area. We're going to tour the National Cemetery. Then we're going to the American Village, and they have a lot of special stuff for their reenactors for us there at that. Then we're having a catered meal at the uh, at uh, the University of Montevallo. Then we're going from there to the uh, uh, Harder Dixie Railroad, and we're having a train ride there. And then this is where the killer comes in. We're going back to Sylacauga, cross country on what they call the lay down road, which is we're going to be out in the boonies there. I told folks, you will not see civilization until we get back to Sylacauga. And then Friday, we are uh, uh, leaving out, going up 280 again. We're going to Harpersville, hang a right, then hit on 25, go over the mountain. We're going all the way to Leeds to the uh, Barber Motorcycle Museum. We're going to get to go around the track on that and, and do that. So th that's it. That's, that's the week. Well, man, that's a, that's a huge schedule. So with all that mileage, what do you do if a car has a hiccup? If it breaks down, what do you do? Do you have blockers? I noticed, uh, was it a Merkel tow truck with the sign on the back? Like, what do you do in those situations? If you can see by eyes now how weary they are, we've had that happen a multitude of times today. In fact, my car, my 1915 Buick that, we, that uh, I was uh, driving this week, it went down on me. It was the first car to die this morning. It's dead for the rest of the week, so I'm going to have to bum a ride for the rest of the week. But we do try to, to safety is a major component in when we're setting these up. And, and I do have Doug Merkel as our safety and tow truck driver. He is, the, he is our caboose every day. He is making sure that uh, 
run interference for us. We have a sign on his truck that says slow, old cars ahead. And uh, he's had to haul in about four today, including mine. Well, thank you for spending time with us, with us today, Mr. White. This is Robert Pearson, Jr., reporting for WOIL-TV 47.